so uh, the statistics uh, statistics in psychology <clears throat> I think uh, you might have, might have heard or learned statistics uh, in your school days I think uh, it's a part of mathematics in seventh or eighth standard I don't know exactly I remember anyway we all have learned uh, statistics in our uh, high, high, uh, high school so uh, so you uh, you have a uh, so something uh, you have a knowledge about something regarding the statistics statistics are uh, basically it is a science of gaining insight from the data or we can simply say that it is it deals with the data as you all know that data means any kind of information that is uh, data and we know that uh, data are everywhere uh, that means uh, informations are everywhere and uh, in that way we can say that this uh, age this modern age is the age of statistics we all are deal with some kind of uh, information or in this uh, era in this modern age or postmodern age data is very important and there are uh, uh, there are many issues regarding the uh, uh, data so we can in that way we can say that uh, our modern age is the age of statistics and statistics is uh, extensively and efficiently used in all field of uh, social sciences in a, almost all uh, in every science uh, this uh, statistics is very important or statistic uh, the science has its uh, application of statistical method but it is most extensively and efficiently efficiently used uh, in the field of uh, social science and now it became an essential part of human life as we all are or dealing with or every kind of information that we uh, know is about uh, some uh, uh, some uh, uh, some kinds of dealing of statistics or uh, some uh, dealing of the information in our daily life actually this is a methodology for understanding assessing and controlling the operation of society and thereby promoting the social wealth. Many kinds of informations are used for understanding the various uh, facets of our uh, social life or assessing the social life and also controlling the social life. So this is very important. Statistics is very important for understanding, assessing and controlling the operation of society <clears throat> and it's a historical term the uh, uh, term statistics is derived from the uh, latin word uh, in uh, uh, every language the statistics has its meaning most importantly in latin it means status or in italian language it is uh, known as statistic statistia or in german it is statistics but according to the observation of a great philosopher and uh, scientist John Cron, it means a person who deals with the affairs of state. As we know that initially, kings or monarchs or government are used to collect information related to the population, agricultural land, wealth, etc. of any state of any country. So this is the uh, in the in that way we can say that uh, uh, the uh, government officials are collecting information related to population or agriculture uh, wealth of the uh, people in a society and in scientific culture as we discussed earlier it deals with or but, but when we talk about the statistics in a scientific term it deals with the collection of data and their classification, analysis, and interpretation of the data. Uh, so in uh, this uh, perspective, statistics has mainly three uses in uh, social sciences. It is used for describing data, 
testing the hypothesis or hypothesis testing and inferring population value from sample value. So in our uh, science, so in our psychology and in related social science, statistics is mainly used for description of the data, for testing the hypothesis formed as part of the research. And uh, we, uh, we, or the scientists, uh, psychologists, or uh, um, sociologists, or journalists, etc., are using uh, the statistics in inferring population value from the sample form. And uh, next, uh, we are going to discuss why statistics is important in psychology or why we study statistics. Before going to this uh, discussion, like Martha, actually, what do you mean by psychology? Anyone, please uh, mute your mic. And... So to study the behavior. Okay, study the behavior. Then, to study a um, uh, human mind in scientific way, scientific ah, method. The, uh, yes, mind in uh, scientific way and in any other perspective or regarding this uh, general study of, of, study of study of mental process, like thinking. Study of, uh, oh, memory. study of mental process, like uh, okay, like uh, thinking, listening, problem solving, etc. Okay, all. Uh, 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 this, uh, all your answers, right? But in psychology, generally, it deals with the, or it is the scientific study of behavior, mental process, and experience of the organism, mainly focusing, on, but mainly focusing on uh, human beings. All uh, psychology deals with uh, this aspect of all organism. But uh, some of these aspects are very important or very evident in higher uh, organism like a human being. For example, experience, even though uh, animals may have experiences, but uh, experience is uh, more importantly discussed in the context of the human being or human experience. So generally, it deals with, generally the study of uh, psychology means scientific understanding of behavior, mental process and uh, uh, experiences. And as we know that uh, psychological research is the cornerstone of our psychology field. Because all information or all kinds of knowledge existed today is the result of the scientific investigation various researchers have undertaken or been undertaken. So whatever knowledge we have now about the psychology or human mind, that is a result of the output of the scientific investigation. That is the output of the psychological research. So uh, so this uh, aspect, this research is very important. In almost all fields, the research is very important. But for psychology, this is very uh, much important than uh, when compared to other sciences because uh, when we try to understand the human mind, or when we try to understand the behavior, mental process, and experiences, environment is very uh, crucial element. And this environment is ever evolving or ever changing aspect as far as the psychologists are concerned. So, when we discuss about uh, uh, this uh, kind of information in terms of the uh, behavior or mental uh, process or experience uh, this uh, environment are changing uh, various uh, type of uh, research are very important and uh, for psychological research statistics is very essential all psychologists need to know how to interpret the information and how to analyze the data or how to analyze the information. In almost all field of psychology, psychologists are gathering information. For example, in clinical psychology, uh, a clinical psychologist or a counselor gather the information about the patient's condition or about the client's condition, about the psychopathology of a patient or psychopathology of an individual. So uh, this information 
uh, key collector has to be interpret and analyze and for this interpretation and analysis uh, statistics is very important so by learning how to correctly interpret the data psychologists can ensure their service to enhance the well-being of the human being so uh, this is very important as far as psychologists are concerned because uh, we all are psychologists are dealing with the uh, different kinds of information about the human mind and by correctly interpreting this data only we can ensure the psychological service to enhance the well-being of the human being and in this context statistics play very important for psychology field or such is very important for psychologists working in various uh, subfield of psychology okay so this is very important and uh, in scientific way in psychological way we can say that statistical technique are used to make many decisions that affect behavior and the experience of our lives this the technique is used to make a decision we come to a conclusion or we make a psychologist make an inference about the various aspect of the behavior mental process and the experience of the individual using the different kinds of statistical uh, techniques so this is the in a context in which uh, statistics is uh, uh, in this uh, by the, by the, this way we can say that statistics is important for the psychology field in almost all fields of psychology uh, the statistical technique are used to analyze and interpret the different kind of uh, data so we so far we have discussed about the uh, uh, information regarding the data so now let us discuss what is data we discuss data means any kind of information and uh, statistical statistical data are usually obtained by counting or measuring some item in terms of its quantity or quality and uh, most uh, data or most information that uh, psychologists are used can be put into the following categories <clears throat> that is uh, mainly it can be uh, data can be divided into quantitative data and qualitative data quantitative and qualitative so our information the information is equal to collect as part of his profession can be uh, classified into qualitative data and quantitative data qualitative mean this kind of information or this kind of measurement that each fall into one of several categories here it is type plus pale it is fall and huh? this not the correction so this kind of information fall into any one of or several of the categories like the color of the eye the color of the hair uh, gender of a person ethnic group and uh, any other attributes of population that's that kind of information is known as qualitative data or qualitative information so uh, quantitative in its, uh, in its uh, other side that is uh, data are observation observation of information that are measured on a numerical scale we can measure this kind of data quantitative data on a numerical Okay. For example, uh, distance traveled uh, by a student to college or number of the children in a family, etc. We can count this number. Sure. Uh, uh, such kind of. So there is a number, the number are saying to this particular kind of data is known as data may be qualitative or <coughs> quantitative in its uh, nature and uh, when we discuss uh, more about this quantitative and qualitative data uh, first uh, we can discuss about the quantitative data are you sharing the presentation still 
we are able to see yeah. you all in the presentation so going now the data again in this detail this uh, both kind of data quantitative and qualitative quantitative data are always a number and this data are the result of counting or measuring attributes of the population and there can again this kind of data can be separated into two groups discrete and continuous data discrete data it is uh, the result of counting like uh, number of students in a classroom or number of books on a shelf or the uh, number of uh, chair in a classroom etc here this kind of data is discrete because it is not in continuous as the next uh, type of data uh, the next type of quantitative data is in continuous data this is also the result of the measuring but it is continuous for example the distance traveled by a student to the uh, college that we can uh, that information may be in terms of for, uh, for example 3.2 uh, kilometers for example or weight of the luggage as 0.8 kilogram etc here the data is in continuous but in discrete data there is uh, that kind of information that kind of data is uh, like a hall number number of the children for example two children in that family or three children or total of four person in a family so that kind of quantitative data is discrete and in continuous data there is a uh, continuous uh, number uh, by 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 assigning a continuous number in qualitative data uh, again uh, it uh, can be divided into two subgroups that is dichotomic and polynomic die as you know that uh, there is only two options like gender and it's not uh, uh, dichotomic but generally we are considering uh, this uh, uh, gender as a dichotomic male and female now it is uh, transgender is also included in this category but uh, usually we are uh, considering two uh, gender as, a, as male and a female and polynomic uh, that means uh, when uh, we explain the uh, data with more than two options for example educational status education level of a person maybe uh, school level education college level education university level education or uh, um, higher education etc okay so there is a polynomic means uh, more than two options okay so uh, we can um, diagrammatically represent uh, this uh, classification of variable like this variable in the quality and quantitative qualitative is again uh, divided into dichotomic and polynomic and the quantitative is uh, divided into discrete and continuous variable <clears throat> and uh, examples are uh, given here as we discussed so two types of data uh, that is used in uh, social science uh, qualitative and uh, quantitative all kind of statistical data are uh, uh, divided into this way qualitative and quantitative aspect and again it's a sub classification yes before uh, we going to this uh, uh, psychological sorry statistics in uh, application of statistics in psychology how uh, psychologists are used to different scales to measure different kinds of uh, attribute as we are concerned okay so there are some scales of measurement psychologists to use for getting information or getting the data and these are the classification for the scale of measurement uh, scale of measurement can be classified into nominal ordinal interval and ratio okay Yes, nominal that means uh, consist of category in each of which the number of respective observation is recorded the categories are in no logical order and no and have no particular relationship with each 
The categories are said to be mutually exclusive since an individual object or measurement can be included in only one of the categories. For example, gender is a nominal scale of measurement. Gender that is male or female, usually we are uh, describing gender as male or female. Here, these two categories are in any way have no logical order. That means male is uh, uh, female is equal or there is no uh, order in this uh, uh, in these categories and uh, there, uh, and also there is no particular relationship with these two categories they are mutually exclusive maybe say mutually exclusive uh, categories as far as the female uh, uh, group as far as the female group is concerned so that, that the kind of uh, uh, scale is known as nominal scale or color of the eye that is another example for nominal scale there is no logical order or no particular relationship with the category or relationship with the group that kind of measurement is known as nominal and second is ordinal as it the name implies there is an order in this classification for example we can classify the students in terms of rank they obtain in a particular examination uh, there is a uh, the first rank for a for a particular student or second rank for a particular student but here one thing uh, one thing is very important difference between each one is not really known that means yeah, for example the first uh, rank holder obtained the mark of uh, 95 out of 100 and the second rank holder may obtain uh, the mark of uh, 9D and third rank holder obtain the mark of uh, 89. Here the difference between each group is not really known or there is no uh, there is no particular difference between each group. Values in one category are larger or smaller than the values in other category. For example in uh, many of the psychological testing there is a rating scale and uh, each item can be rated as excellent good fair or poor uh, so here there is an order as we know that excellent is the uh, uh, most uh, uh, favorably uh, ordered uh, uh, of uh, uh, option and then good then fair and poor so there is an order Next is the interval. Here, <coughs> both order and exact difference between the values are known. For example, in the case of the uh, Celsius temperature measurement, difference between 60 and 50 is 10 degree. And here it is uh, the same as the difference between 80 and 70. So there is a, uh, a difference in 10 degrees, 10 degrees in heat. And many of the psychological scales are interval in nature. You can, for example, you can understand when we assess the intellectual quotient of, uh, of a person, normally it is uh, assigned in terms of difference between 15 or 20. For example, average IQ of the person is in between 90 to 110. Then after that, uh, there is a difference between 110 and 130. That group is known as above average intellectual group, then above 130. So like there is a exact number of difference between each group. That is the interval scale. And last one, that is ratio here, it consists of numerical measurement where the distance between number is of a non or a constant start size and zero is meaningful here. In the case of the interval, we can say that there is no zero temperature, no true zero temperature. Uh, uh, this zero is also a kind of temperature that we can feel or below the zero 
so we can be uh, the uh, yes uh, the core here this uh, ratio numerical measurement where the distance between number is of a constant size and zero is meaningful for example if we uh, assessing the weight in a weighing machine the, uh, the needle of the machine start from this zero to a particular number for example 60 kg or 56 in that case zero is very important when we or when we measure the height of a person we start from the number zero to a uh, particular uh, feet or inch so in this way we can classify this measurement into nominal ordinal interval or ratio so any kind of psychological uh, measurement used in research or psychological research may take any of this uh, measurement category sometimes it may be nominal for example if you take gender as a variable gender as a uh, important variable we use the nominal scale of measurement or in some case the psychologists use order uh, so they are using ordinal first rank or first uh, place in the uh, for a person in a particular examination so in that case ordinal measurement psychologists are using an interval where there is an exact difference between each category interval scale is used and ratio scale when zero has its uh, uh, meaningful in measuring ratio scale is used so these are the scales so our data may be psychological data may be fall in any of these category it may be nominal ordinal interval or ratio in its uh, nature okay so this is the basic of uh, the data data may be qualitative or quantitative psychologists are using the data in terms of nominal ordinal interval and rich and the uh, the uh, next uh, topic is how we how psychologists are uh, taking data to analyze or to arrive at conclusion in a research uh, process actually uh, this time you have you may have heard this population and sample population uh, we obtain the data from the population by we are taking the sample of that population so there is a, there are two terms population and sample population means the entire set of individual or objects of interest or the measurement obtained from all individual or object of interest okay this is the entire set of the individual or object of interest to the investigator object of interest to the researcher and sample means a portion a part of the population of the interest that assume to represent like supposed to represent the entire population here and this uh, uh, figure this uh, car as are given as the uh, object of interest in this population and the uh, investigator taking a particular sample from this population to test the fuel efficiency of its engine okay so sample means item we selected from item the researcher selected from the population and population the entire set of the individual or object generally uh, in research the uh, psychologists are taking the sample from a particular population for example taking the student as the sample that means whatever we come to the conclusion as a part of the research it is uh, it represents that assumption is actually representing the characteristics of the population but by checking or by assessing by analyzing the data from a particular sample that is the so we obtain the psychologist or researcher obtain the data for the statistical analysis from the population by taking a particular portion particular portion part that is sample okay so these are these uh, very uh, basic information about the data data may be qualitative quantitative and in psychology 
we obtain data by using four types of measurement and we uh, by using for uh, type of measurement and we obtain the data from the population using or taking particular sample okay now we are uh, entering this uh, detail aspect of the science of statistics especially statistics is used in statistical method is used in psychology yes <clears throat> generally statistics uh, uh, some um, scientists or uh, some uh, mathematicians are considering statistics as part of the uh, mathematics but uh, statistics as such is a separate uh, discipline separate uh, entity and it uh, broadly studied under two heading descriptive statistics and inferential statistics statistics is uh, used for describing the information describing the data similarly statistics are used for inferring some kind of information from the data okay so in this way we can uh, discuss the statistics under these two subheading descriptive statistics and uh, inferential statistics for describing the data or for descriptive statistics it is it deals with uh, or it discusses the method of organizing summarizing and the present and presenting data in an informative way to the scientific community or to the people in general okay uh, so there is uh, there are some method for organizing or summarizing and presenting data with uh, 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 with uh, some kind of intention uh, in an informative way to the population to the uh, to the people that is uh, uh, that is uh, descriptive statistics and <coughs> inferential statistics is method used to determine something about the population on the basis of the sample as we discussed earlier by checking the fuel efficiency of some cars in a sample determining the fuel efficiency of the all cars manufactured in that company okay here the researcher or the investigator is determining something about the population but on the basis of the sample so uh, inferring something based on sampling inferring something about the population based on sample so that this kind of statistics is known as inferential statistics so statistics are used for describing the data and also used to determining or inferring something about the population from the sample okay so two kinds of statistics descriptive statistics and uh, inferential statistics and uh, this in uh, descriptive statistics as we discussed it is the description of the obtained data describe the characteristics of the data and it mainly involves two operation organization and summarize of summarization of the data organizing the data in a particular way and summarizing the data in a particular way that is uh, informative to the population informative to the people uh, to whom it is uh, this uh, data concerned so organization and the summarization of data is the uh, is the two main, main are the main two uh, operation to operations involved in descriptive statistics and inferential statistics deals with the drawing conclusion about the population on the basis of the sample or the event which are yet to occur on the basis of the past event. In another way, we can say that inferential statistics is an educated guess about the population based on the sample. It provides two 
uh, inferential statistical methods provide tools to compute the probability of future behavior of the objects. For, <coughs> for any science, prediction is very important. So this inferential studies are mainly used for prediction, uh, for the purpose of the prediction, predicting the behavior of the individual. That is one of the major goal of the uh, science of psychology, prediction of the behavior. Here, using in uh, scientific way or in uh, the context of research, we can say that uh, this kind of statistical method provides some tools to <coughs> compute the probability of the future behavior of the human being, human being. How the human behavior, how a person behaves in a particular context, that kind of behavior is uh, predicted by the researcher using the inferential statistics. And here, uh, as we discussed, uh, used to determine something about the population on the basis of the sample. Okay, so first uh, we can discuss about the first part of the uh, first operation of the descriptive data, that is uh, organization, that we can work for the next aspect, that is the summary session. Organization is mainly uh, uh, mainly involved uh, in the you know, statistical process like uh, tab, uh, classification, tabulation, and uh, presentation. Okay. And uh, this uh, summarization. Uh, summary is, uh, in summary, the statistical techniques are used to determine the central tendency of the data, dispersion of the data, uh, and also to understand the skewness and courtesies of the data collected by the researcher for a scientific purpose. So first, uh, we will discuss uh, the <coughs> organization. This organization that is a classification, I think uh, all this uh, 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 we have learned or we have studied in our uh, high school level. So classification, once the data collected, it should be arranged in a particular format. So the arrangement of the data in the group according to some similarities, according to some criteria that is the classification. Actually, it is a summary of the frequency of the individual score or the range of scores for a variable. Raw data are organized as frequency distribution. We draw a particular uh, table and we count the, uh, we put the tally mark based on the frequency of a particular data. Okay, that is the classification uh, with uh, frequency distribution. And there are uh, frequency distribution for ungrouped data and uh, grouped data. I think all these are. Uh, Yes, uh, you have already learned how to ask maybe some group data. Anyway, next is a uh, type of frequency uh, distribution that is uh, there may be a relative distribution. Relative distribution that is proportion of the total number of cases observed at each score. That is relative. Cumulative to know the number of observation less than a particular number or at a particular level. That is cumulative. For example, uh, how many data are under a particular score? For example, under the score of 70. Uh, so we can uh, add the data, number of frequencies uh, in uh, different uh, classes uh, below the score of the 70. That is a cumulative data. Then cumulative relative entry of any score of the class interval expressed scores cumulative frequency as a proportion of the total number of frequencies. Here, the number of the uh, fre sorry, frequency is determined as a proportion of the total number of the cases. That is the type of uh, frequency distribution. All these are very simple, and I think uh, we all have learned uh, this as part of the uh, high school education. And the tabulation, that means, tabulation means uh, presenting uh, the data in the format of a table. Table is systematic arrangement of classified data in row and column with appropriate heading and subheading. So for a table, 
there should be table number, title, caption, subheading, body of table, in some cases, head note, foot note, source of information, etc. And uh, this kind of uh, table, uh, we all are familiar with uh, any kind of information presented in scientific way. Uh, uh, in uh, news papers, in television, or any other kind of media. So, uh, for the table, uh, uh, these uh, characteristics are very important. Otherwise, the table is, uh, uh, without uh, presentation of the table, it became uh, without any meaning. And next is, so first we classify, then we presented the table in the form of tabulation. Then the researcher is, or we are going to present the data in an informative way to the tip. So, data can be presented in graphical or diagrammatic format. Information contained in a frequency table is displayed in graph, displayed in graphic or diagrammatic format. <coughs> As graphical patterns, uh, uh, there are some, uh, sorry, there are, uh, this graphical pattern can be of uh, histogram, frequency polygon, and uh, frequency curve. All these are uh, plants, okay. So, histogram, then this is uh, frequency polygon, then this is uh, a cumulative frequency, and another, <coughs> sorry, the other, End of uh, presentation of the data is in diagrammatic form or diagram. Uh, mainly there are bar and it's a different bar diagram and it's a different pattern and also pie diagram. Okay, this is an example for uh, sorry, this is a figure for the COVID positive case in Kerala for the last week from the 25th September to uh, uh, last yesterday, 2nd October. The number of cases uh, that is presented in the bar data. Hmm? Okay, this is the graphical uh, representation in uh, diagrammatic. Sorry, bar is bar diagram. Ah, yes, all these are different patterns of uh, bar diagram. Here, <coughs> in this uh, bar diagram, uh, the total uh, in this example, total expenditure of students belong to two. Area that is one is uh, rural and the other is uh, urban area, mm -hmm. and there are uh, different uh, uh, levels of expenditure that is represented in one bar diagram for uh, both these two groups of students students from the rural and from the urban areas. And this is uh, another uh, kind of bar diagram. Here is also this uh, representation of uh, here uh, in this figure it is uh, uh, um, uh, di uh, diagrammatically represented. Uh, uh, this figure shows the percentage of respondents experience different symptoms related to cardiac problem like uh, chest discomfort, nausea, vomiting, breathlessness, itching, irregular heartbeat, cough. Etc. Okay, so this is uh, another kind of uh, bar diagram. These uh, diagrams are used. Hello, this kind of uh, diagrams are used for comparative purposes. In this diagram, this uh, figure represents comparison of mean score of different ways of coping of parents with autistic children learning disabled children and parents with uh, normal children. Okay, here coping ways of the figure uh, shows coping ways of different ways of coping uh, mechanism of parents with three groups of children, two groups of children with the uh, comparison of normal children. Okay, autistic, uh, here uh, this autistic group is represented the red uh, bar. And for LD, learning disabled children, that is uh, this uh, green and the other color, uh, I don't know whether you can see this uh, different color, that is uh, in terms of the parents of the uh, normal children. Okay, so here the bar diagram is used for the purpose of the comparison. Okay, 
and uh, this is a uh, pi diagram and uh, you uh, know what is the for the pi diagram or uh, the, the kind of information is uh, 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 describes uh, using the circular form that is the pi diagram here the different levels of quality of life of uh, some sample is uh, expressed in this diagram here as see as you can see 45 percentage of the uh, respondent or participant in that group is having the average quality of life 20 percent with the low quality of life and 10 uh, percent with moderate uh, 10 percent with the moderate and uh, it's uh, 17 percentage with the very low and uh, only 8 percentage with the high or high levels of quality okay so this is a bar diagram so in this way data can be uh data can be is presented in <coughs> graphical patterns uh this graphical patterns so uh, using different kinds of graph uh, like histogram frequency polygon then bar diagram pi diagram etc this is the uh, presentation of the data <coughs> and uh, next is next is the summarization when we obtain uh, uh, data from a sample collected from a population that uh, sample is having some common proper properties or some commonalities and these commonalities are uh, represented in different ways that is known as summarization of the data we are summarizing the data collected from a particular sample and the summary of the data is uh, uh, mainly as we discussed central tendency dispersion skewness and uh, hypothesis first one that is uh, central tendency <clears throat> uh, this also we all have learned okay we have all, all, all we all have said <coughs> Studied. First one that is central tendency. Mainly there are three central tendency. They are mean, median, and mode. <coughs> mean means it can be calculated by summing the value of variable divided by the number of values. That is uh, uh, that generally called as a average this is most popular and widely used central tendency from the obtained information we summarize the data by finding its average for example by collecting the marks from the school from the class of from the class of a particular standard the teacher summarizing the mark of student by finding its average, the average of the mark or mean of the mark, that is the summarization of the data. And another <coughs> central tendency is median, as its uh, uh, name implies, it is the middlemost value when the data are arranged in ascending or descending order. Or this value divides the entire distribution into two equal parts, and we find a middlemost value. Two groups are there. Uh, a, a group of people or group of individual having uh, the value below the median and the value above the median. And uh, uh, and here uh, this uh, one thing that is important: um, uh, this median is not affected by extreme values in the distribution, as in the case of the uh, as in the case of the mean. When we take the average or mean of the data, all values, especially the extreme values, are important because this value has 
uh, some effects, some main effects on this uh, on the <coughs> calculation of the mean. But in the case of the median, we are focusing only the middlemost value, whatever the value, whatever the value may be in its 60, maybe very low value in its uh, uh, one side or very high value uh, as compared to the median in <coughs> another situation. But here it is not affected by the extreme value. <coughs> and more, that is most frequently occurred that uh, of the maximum concentration of the frequency on a particular score, that is the mode. So, <clears throat> in this way, we can say that, or the investigator summarizing the data, the investigator summarizing the data by finding its central tendency, uh, and uh, central tendency like the mean, median, or more. <clears throat> and another question is, so by knowing only the central tendency, the researcher is not able to assess or understand the, the characteristics of uh, other data in the set of uh, set of data. Okay. Or how other data are dispersed from the central tendency. That is also important and here the statisticians are using uh, another uh, uh, another uh, measure that is known as measures of this possible to have the complete picture of the set of the data or the entire data in a particular set how each observation, how each datum are scattered from each other from the mean or from the central tendency is also important. So measures of this question tells about particular index. This index tells about how each data are dispersed from the central tendency or how each data is weighted from this central tendency that is known as message of dispersion. And for the dispersion, uh, mainly there are <coughs> three dispersion, range, average deviation, and the standard deviation. <coughs> OK. Range, that is, this, it's the simplest form of dispersion. And uh, range means uh, uh, data is uh, varied in a particular range. For example, from 22 25. So range means difference between largest and the smallest score. So in that way, we can say that this uh, entire data is uh, set in the group with a range of 15, for example, or in the range of 2 or 3. Okay, this is the simplest form here. It is the difference between highest and the lowest value. And average deviation is, here it means, <clears throat> arithmetic mean of difference between each score and mean. Yes. Next is very important, standard deviation. This is the standard value as far as the statistician or statistical methods are used, like mean in the case of the central tendency. Standard deviation is uh, most terrible and most widely used index of variability or dispersion. It is the square of the deviation of each data from the mean. Each data from the central tendency. Each data from the mean. <coughs> Sorry, the square root of uh, each data. Actually, the square of deviation from each data is known as variance. And square root of standard deviation. Or square root of the deviation of each, de each data from its outcome is known as variance. Thus, standard deviation is the square root of the mean of square deviation of individual data from the mean. And it is least affected by the fluctuation of sampling. In some situation, <coughs> this uh, 
fluctuation is uh, of something is uh, a factor for understanding the uh, for understanding the uh, distribution and <clears throat> this is the step for calculating the standard deviation and uh, now we are uh, we are uh, approaching or closing uh, to the problems of our uh, paper or statistics paper uh, step four uh, finding uh, this uh, standard deviation first is step for finding the standard <laughs> deviation first step is find the mean of the data and second is find the square of its distance square of distance of each data from the mean third step is sum the value from this step to find its uh, sum uh, of the value in uh, step 2 and the fourth step is divide by the number of the data number of the individual or number of the observation in the uh, number of the uh, observation in the <coughs> sample and take its square root that is the value of the standard t okay so this is the standard formula for finding the standard deviation <coughs> okay so there are first we discussed about this uh, central tendency for any set of data there is a central value which may be in terms of the uh, it can be uh, calculated by using mean median or more and for it from the central value we use the other measures like a range average deviation standard deviation and uh, uh, next is to know about the symmetrical nature of the data symmetrical or asymmetrical distribution of the uh, data we are uh, using another measure or another characteristic of the summarization of the data that is as skewness and the truth these are the two important characteristics of the distribution or any uh, for a distribution of any kind of data <coughs> skewness that means degree of asymmetry of this in social science uh, there is a assumption that the collected data will be in the form of a normal distribution curve normal uh, curve that uh, will show uh, after this later uh, like a bell shaped curve i think you might have uh, familiar with that curve and here skewness refers to the extent which a distribution of the data is concentrated at one of the distribution curve and curtos this means weakness or flattedness of a frequent distribution curve when compared with normal distribution curve more peak than uh, a normal that i will show it's uh, uh, yes for this uh, skewness after uh, skewness we can discuss this hypothesis skewness there are two types of skewness that is negative skewed or positive skewed. yes so this uh, in this uh, figure the central figure uh, b is the normal distribution curve with uh, no skew with the uh, uh, that uh, that uh, distribution is that uh, data set of data is no, uh, normally distributed without any uh, positive or and uh, without any skewness. And in the case of the negative skewness, the data is concentrated on the left side. Okay. Uh, so in opposition, in positive skewed, the data is concentrated on right. Side. So when the data is uh, negative skewed, mean became the uh, left to median and more. And here is also when the, um, the distribution is positively scored, the mean 
is the right side of the mod and mean. It is rightly or positively skewed and negatively, uh, sorry, ne uh, 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 skewed with the left sideness that is negatively skewed when compared with the normal distribution curve, normal skewness. Okay. Yes. Another uh, the other characteristics uh, that we discussed that is uh, kurtosis is normal distribution. This is the, the, the central curve is the normal distribution curve without any flattedness or uh, peakedness, and that is known as mesocortic. That is normal distribution. So when compared this with uh, this uh, normal distribution curve or mesocortic, there may be peakedness as in the case of the leptocorti or there may be flattedness in the case of flatty curve. So a distribution with the peakedness is known as uh, leptocorti or flattedness is known as flatty So uh, uh, kurtosis may be of uh, three types, leptocorti, uh, mesocorti and flattocorti uh, and uh, this uh, mm, but this uh, uh, skewness is also uh, distribution may be negatively skewed, positively skewed, or without any skew, as in the case of uh, normal uh, distribution. So these are the three properties of uh, distribution of data or set of data. For a set of data, there may be central tendency, there may be dispersion of data from its central tendency, or uh, in the context of the normal distribution curve, or when we compare with the normal distribution curve, the data may be with some uh, asymmetric or, uh, or maybe with the proper symmetrical uh, level, or there may be a negative concentration. Let's oh, sorry, data may be of, uh, of uh, concentrated left side of the normal distribution curve or right side, or maybe of width. Uh, peakedness or uh, flattedness. So, for any uh, research purpose, the data should be like a normally distributed. Then only uh, <coughs> the conclusion uh, or inference will be adequately or, or yes, uh, it can be adequately generalized to the population. When the data will be negatively skewed and positively skewed, uh, the result or the conclusion may not be applicable to the public because of this uh, improper arrangement of this data in the particular sense. But there may, uh, similarly, there may be problem with the uh, uh, data uh, in the case of the pedicurtic uh, and uh, lepto. So whenever the data is in normally distributed like this, as seen in this figure in uh, figure in the middle figure, then we can uh, reliably generalize the information to the, the uh, purpose. So a researcher must be very careful about the uh, property, especially the skewness and the kurtosis of the distribution of the that uh, or distribution of the data will be very <coughs> important okay so these are the basics of the uh, basics of this uh, summarization of the data uh, then before that we discussed this uh, organization of the that this uh, uh, this type of uh, uh, organizing description and summarization is generally comes under the uh, heading of the or under the uh, categories of the descriptive statistics. They are describing the, the sample characteristics in this way. This sample is having a particular central tendency with uh, this kind of dispersion. With a particular skew, there may be value for skew, or in all these cases, uh, there may be value. Uh, 
uh, with the uh, skill and skill may be positivity or negativity or there may be some uh, kind of or there may be some values that represent the kurtosis of the distribution normally if it is zero then only we can say that it is uh, not the distribution if there is a number that uh, that number indicate positive or negative sign in the case of the skewness may Okay, so that is the uh, descriptive statistics, <clears throat> and for uh, descriptive statistics, is for the simple uh, analysis of the uh, descriptive statistics is commonly used for the simple analysis of the data. For this prediction purpose, for the purpose of the inferences, we uh, you go for the next aspect of the statistics that is inferential statistics i think before going to this uh, inferential statistics and for the psychology inferential statistics is very important uh, because all the research <coughs> problem are addressed with using the inferential statistics okay so i think before going to uh, the inferential statistics uh, uh, I will give you a problem as it's shown in this uh, slide. Find the mean, median, mode, range, and the standard deviation for the following. Yes, after this uh, uh, basic of inferential statistics, the other parts of this class will be will be on discussing the problem and its various steps and its answer. Okay, so then we can start from here by using this uh, simple problem. So, you please uh, find the mean, median, mode, range, and standard deviation of the data. Now itself this is very simple. And after that, we can continue the class. OK. OK. So, uh, what is the mean here? Mean of this data series, mean of these values? 20. 20. 20. Okay. Median? 20. Median? 20. 20. And more, whatever, more? 20. 20. 20. 20. 20. 20. 20. So mean, median, more are the same value. That's, uh, that is 20. And range is? 8. The highest and the yes. Mm -hmm. The difference between highest and lowest value that is here the lowest value is uh, 16, 16 and the highest is 24. So is it? Eight. Okay. Then standard deviation. Is it two point four? Standard deviation two point four. I don't know. Find the answer if uh, there are uh, more than five similar answers, then we will consider it as the right answer. Okay. So, what is this? These are steps for uh, finding the standard deviation. First, to find the mean of the value, and after that, take the difference between mean and there are some disturbance. Sorry, this. Uh, that make I don't know. Yes. Uh, Doctor, be uh, noise to you. Find the difference between each data from the mean, and uh, in order to uh, in order to avoid the negative sign, take its uh, uh, square. Okay, and add all this value, then using the formula root of sum x square divided by n. Here x means difference between difference between each score from the mean and its square sum all this value divided by number take its square root that is the standard deviation 
Yes, what is the answer? Three hundred. Two point four. Two point three six. Two point three six. Three hundred. साधारण या प्रॉब्लम Yeah, it is two point three six. Okay. Yes. Two point three six. Yes. Ah. One important thing that you should not for doing this statistical calculation. Don't put the approximate number. Okay. You take the first two values after decimal point. Not to, and uh, not to uh, approximate to the next whole number. Okay. Uh, that will uh, create a problem for finding out uh, the problem with more steps. If you approximate each value in each step, the final answer will be very different from the uh, real answer. Okay, so take the first two value after the decimal. Okay, in all this uh, statistical calculation, it is very important. Okay, uh, so the answer is. What is the answer here? Two point three six. Two point three six. Okay. Where are going to two point three six? Did you know that? Prepare in this. Sir, hello, hello. Into two point four. Yes. Two point three four. Two point three six. Yes. Two point three six. Okay. Kritya, my answer is that that carry you step on the floor. It is simple and step. What else? First of all, find the mean. You have already uh, found the mean. That is twenty. Then take the deviation from uh, take the deviation of each data from the twenty. That is uh, uh, yes. So you will get uh, my uh, some values with the minus or plus. So take its square root and add all these um, square. Sorry, not square root. Square. That is uh, some x square divided by number of observation, and take its square root. That is the value of the standard deviation. Okay, one minute, one minute. I will exact answer. We have twenty-two. That is minus two. That is four. One. What again? One nine nine zero zero. Sixteen zero again sixteen one. So what is sum x square? Sum of x square is equal to fifty six. Fifty six. Three. Fifty six. Oh. Six. 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 One. Oh, one minute. Yes, fifty-six. So sum x square is equal to fifty-six. How many observations here? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Ten, ten. Yeah, ten observations. So fifty-six divided by ten. That oh, is okay, five yeah. point six. Fifty is square root of five point six. That is the answer. Okay. Uh. Okay. Yeah. That is two point three six. Two point three six. Two point three six. Yes, two point three six three. Okay. So for this uh, uh, data, set of data, the data is arranged with 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 a variable index of two point three six. That means. This data is hello. That means this uh, data is 
arranged array set with the central tendency of 20 and with a variable index of with a dispersion of the 2.6. So each data is dispersed or varied with a with a common index or with an average index of 2.6. So we can uh, we can under, uh, we can uh, uh, by looking at this data we can understand. For example, 20 uh, difference between 20 and 22. 20 and 19, 17, 23. So the average of this deviation, average of this distance, if we if we put this uh, data with a distance of 2, 3, 1, we can understand that this data are arranged uh, from the central tendency or from the central point of 20 with an index of or with an average of 2 points. So the average of this portion is uh, uh, the <coughs> And, uh, sorry, standard deviation. Deviation of each data from the mean with a standard index, with a standard value. That value is 2.6 in this form. Okay. So uh, this is the descriptive statistics for this problem. Uh, not for the entire descriptive statistics. If you find the uh, skewness and kurtosis, uh, 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 skewness and kurtosis. And only we can say that we uh, describe this data with its all property, with its central tendency, central uh, sorry, central tendency dispersion, and skewness and and for uh, skewness and kurtosis is, is not for this uh, problem purpose, so we are not uh, going for that uh, discussion. Okay. <clears throat> anyway. Next is uh, this uh, inferential statistics. I think uh, uh, we will just uh, uh, introduce this uh, uh, inferential statistics and uh, after that we can uh, finish the class today. Okay. <clears throat> so the other part of the statistical technique or statistical method or statistics that is inferential statistics. That is uh, inferential statistics, and uh, as we discussed uh, earlier, <clears throat> it is the mathematics and logic of how generalization is possible from a sample to the entire population. How uh, an inference can be generalized to the population using uh, analyzing the properties of the sample. That is the uh, core of this uh, statistical, sorry, inferential statistics. Okay, and this uh, type of statistics is widely applied in statistical, sorry, psychological research, and it deals with mainly deals with the conclusion about the large group of people or population on the basis of observation of few participants. Hello? Visible or no? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Hello? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Nobody is responding. Hello? Ah, Sorry. Yes. And uh, two types of inferential procedure. First one is estimation, and second is hypothesis testing. Estimation and uh, hypothesis testing are uh, two kinds of uh, inferential statistics. Estimation, that means <coughs> the investigator or researcher is estimating the characteristics of the population on the basis of what he or she discovered about the sample. And it can be influenced by the chance fluctuation and variation in sampling technique and other sampling errors. Here, estimation may be uh, unbiased or it may be, uh, sometimes it may be a uh, problem with uh, consistent accuracy. And the two types of estimation procedure, they are 
point estimation and interval estimation. Yes, point estimation means estimation of population mean sample statistics. We are finding the uh, uh, sorry, we are finding the mean of the sample, and uh, we are inferring that this is the mean of the population. Exactly, we are uh, exactly we are finding the mean of the uh, population by understanding or by checking the mean of the sample. That is point estimation. Interval estimation, estimation of population mean will not be equal to the exact value of the parameter. So, construct an uh, interval of this course that is expected to include the value of population mean. Such interval is called confidence interval expected to contain the population. There is an interval and in that interval there is a point, there is a uh, score or there is a uh, value and that value may be oh, sorry that, that value is the uh, that value is the mean of the population so here the mean is estimated as an interval mean may be with the interval of for example 3.62 4.8 that kind of interval is known so sorry that kind of inference is known as interval estimation and for the psychological purpose uh, for, for the further so uh, for psychological research purpose hypothesis testing is very important testing the hypothesis is important i think uh, you might have uh, so studied this uh, hypothesis testing in uh, in your uh, research paper in your research methodology paper anyway uh, generally, uh, this uh, inferential statistics is uh, closely related to the logic of the testing hypothesis or making a decision based on the statistical procedure. And it is the central theme in most of the psychological research. Hypothesis, as uh, you might have said, is a tentative and tested answer to the question formulated by the investigator in a tentative answer is a tentative answer when there is a problem as, uh, for a research or whenever an investigator finds a problem to uh, study as part of his research purpose research there is a problem or the research start with a problem Obviously, there is a problem and there is an answer. So, this answer is put in the form of the hypothesis. So, this answer may be a tentative in its nature and it also testable. So, hypothesis means native and testable answer to the question. It may be a statement and the statement may or may not be true about the population parameter. When we uh, check uh, this uh, parameter in terms of the sample means the parameter sample parameter may or may not be true about the population parameter okay so question is whether is whether the hypothesis is reasonable in the light of the evidence collected from the sample researcher collect the evidence or data or information from the sample and he is testing this uh, evidence this information to know whether it is reasonable that is the question or that is central theme of hypothesis testing it is a procedure for deciding whether the result of the studies which examine a sample support a particular theory but for innovation or belief or knowledge which applies to a population. This will start uh, with the uh, problem and this problem may be related to the experience of the investigator, knowledge or theoretical uh, aspect, etc. 
But uh, the question is whether uh, the sample or the uh, evidence from the sample, data from the sample, support uh, support the uh, support the uh, hypothesis form. And generally, the hypothesis is stated in terms of null hypothesis and uh, alternative hypothesis. I think. Uh, Okay, I think we can finish here now. Uh -huh. And we can continue in the next class. Hypothesis statement, null hypothesis, uh, automatic hypothesis procedure, I think. Anyway, now it is the third work of this key. So we can continue in the next class from this first uh, hypothesis. Okay. Hello? Okay, sir. Thank you. Uh, thank you, sir. Uh, so today we are okay. Uh, sir, uh, sir, one request, okay. sir. From the next day onwards, uh, we prepare for doing problem. Okay. So after this, uh, this uh, basics of this inferential statistics, we are we will uh, we will uh, discuss the problem. Okay. Uh, uh, different types of statistical problem uh, based on this uh, parametric and non parametric. Okay. Yes, sir. yes, so we can finish now today. Okay, sir. Thank okay, you, sir. thank you for. Uh,